All right, welcome back. Uh, let's continue with uh, chapter 22. What we'll do is we'll do chapter 22 and then we'll stop because we'll get to section three, which is um, uh, the blood, which we'll start from next uh, week onwards. So let's look at this uh, chapter quickly. Uh, the way of the cross, right? Now, how does, I'm sure we, we have, you know, studied on this and we have uh, looked at various aspects, but how does the cross affect our daily life? How is it uh, to embracing the cross and the wonderful blessings that the cross provides for us? Uh, how must we live? How must we, uh, you know, understand what Jesus did on the cross? And as believers, what is our life? What What, what is it that we must go through uh, as part of journeying uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ? Let's look at a few points. First one, the offense of the cross. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 11 says, And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. Now, Paul is writing to the Galatians. He's reminding them and he's telling them, If I'm being persecuted, it is because... The cross is not, you know, it's a place of offense. Nobody is going to, be, you know, readily accept the cross or the message of the cross. Right? It's an offense. The moment you say you believe in Jesus, this is what happened. He was a good man. He died on the cross. It becomes an offense. Right? Galatians 6.12 says, As many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, these would compel you to be circumcised, only that they may suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. So Paul is saying now, just because we see the wonderful things of what Jesus did on the cross, the blessings of the cross, but the part of us as believers is also the persecution that is involved. Now, when we look at what's happening around the world, Christian faith is being persecuted widely, right? You've got persecution, especially in uh, some of the Arab countries, in our nation as well, persecution is really high. Um, and, and in different countries, right? There's, there's a lot of persecution on Christians. Why is it so? Because the cross is an offense to people. It's offensive to their ears. When you speak to probably, uh, for example, right? If you speak to a, a, a person who, of Mus who is a Muslim, it's offensive to say that the Son of God died on the cross. They're not going to accept it, right? And here's the thing. Paul is telling the believers in Galatia that you also will be persecuted for your faith. So one of the things that we must understand is that the cross is offensive and we will be persecuted for our faith. But that does not change who we are in Christ. It does not change the blessings and the grace and the mercies that flow from him. Right? But be ready for persecution. If we read the book of Revelations in, during the end times, we see that persecution is going to reach its highest level. But on the other side, there's going to be uh, you know, world outreaches. There's going to be a global, uh, you know, uh, awakening in the Holy Spirit where many, many people will accept the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior. So the enemy is doing his part. But here the Lord Jesus is also doing his part, right? Where many, many, there's going to be, a, a, you know, a complete, a global awakening. Many churches will be filled Thousands and thousands of people will accept Jesus Christ. This side, there will be heavy persecution on Christians. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. Now, as we as believers of the cross, believers of Christ, there's a separation from the world. Paul writes it beautifully. He says, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I don't belong to the things of this world anymore. Galatians 6, 14. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. So Paul is saying the world is crucified to me, meaning 
the pleasures of this world, wealth, luxury, and all these things, is crucified to me. Now, I want to be careful. I don't. I, I, I'm not. You know, saying that we must not enjoy the things that God has given us. Yes, it's good. God blesses us, but there's a place of separation from the world. We are in this world, but we are not of the world. It's good when God blesses us. God blesses us with business or income and finances and prosperity. It's God's blessings. But when we use all of this as wrong means, we have failed. Right? We have, been, uh, we have indulged in the things of this world. The cross of Christ is also used in, the, in, in, in Scripture for life as a result of faith in Christ. There's a, there's a place of self-denial. The Lord Jesus separated himself. He, he came, you know, he, there was self-denial. He denied certain things in his life just so that he could fulfill the work. Now, as believers, we have fellowship in his sufferings, right? Uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 24 to 26. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ. For the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to the saints. So Paul is saying, uh, uh, I, I fill in my flesh what is lacking the afflictions of Christ. So Sufferings, difficulties, challenges is a part of life. And the Lord Jesus is, is there with us to help us through all of these seasons. You know, it's very disheartening when we hear, you know, I keep getting these WhatsApp messages from the persecution relief in, in our nation, especially in India, where many pastors have been arrested. And they've been in prison for the past six, seven months. And they have a wife, they have a small child. There's another pastor who's in, in prison and he has a six-month-old baby. He hasn't seen his baby for the past six months. There's no income at home. The believers are just, you know, making some food and helping them. But he's in prison. The case has been, you know, they're saying they're just postponing it month after month after month. It's almost going to be a year that he's in prison for no fault of his. It's very disheartening to hear of all of this. And we as believers must, with a burden, you know, fellowship in their suffering. We thank God for what, you know, for the freedom that we have. But not everyone have that freedom. Many of them, you know, are in prison. Uh, you know, there's this, there are some pastors that I know of who are fearful every Sunday. They're fearful. They don't know when. Uh, attacks are going to happen. They don't know when people are going to come. A mob is going to come and break the chairs, break the church. They don't know. If you read the persecutions that happened in 2008 in Kandamal, where uh, Graham Staines and his uh, uh, children, uh, two sons were burnt alive, that was just one event, a very painful event. But there were hundreds of events, hundreds of testimonies. There's a booklet uh, written on that. Um, you know, the persecutions of Kandamal in Orissa, where many of them were tied up and burnt in their own homes. Many of them were cut into two. Now, I'm not talking about early church persecution. I'm talking about 2008. And Christ is saying we must fellowship in their sufferings. We must pray for them. We must be there for them, support them. Uh, in whatever way we can, because it is part of ministry. God has assigned it for some. God has, and we as his children, we as, uh, when we understand that we are one body, we must, you know, be there for them, fellowship in their sufferings. Uh, I'm sure we read a lot of these testimonies. Say a word of prayer. Remember them. One of the things we do in our family prayer is we always pray for the persecuted families, persecuted pastors, evangelists, 
uh, you know, uh, because they may be going through such a difficult time. They're doing something good. They're preaching the gospel, but their lives are at stake. Um, and and you know, we must be pray. For, we must pray for them. We must stand with them as believers. Uh, next point: There are enemies of the cross of Jesus Christ who try to belittle the work of atonement. Uh, uh, you know, the enemies of the cross in this world are people who are too proud to believe in the gospel. There are people, right? I've shared with many people where they said, I can't, I don't believe this. You just be a good person, live a good life, help the poor, help the needy. That is better than, you know, going to church and living a, uh, uh, those kind of, you know, living a double life and all these things. There are enemies of the cross. There are people who don't believe in the cross. They say the cross is nothing. But in Philippians chapter 3, 17 to 19, I'll read that. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shape, who set their minds on earthly things. And Paul is writing this way back to the Philippians. And he's saying there are enemies of the cross. Are there enemies of the cross now? Yes, plenty, plenty enemies of the cross. People don't want to accept the work of the cross. Right? Uh, and it's sad to see this. Uh, and it's not something new. There will be enemies of the cross. The, you know, Satan is able to you know, deceive us from the truth. He'll put a thought in our mind saying, you know, uh, your life has been so bad. That's because you've been you know, trying to live this holy life. Nothing has been working out for you. Why don't you try the other way? And people turn away from God. They become enemies of the cross. There are the, the most unfortunate thing is to be enemies of the cross in the church. You know, pride, worldliness. These are enemies of the cross. In the church, we have so many times when people have you know, cheated. There's sexual immorality. There's... Uh, fornication, there is cheating, there is, uh, you know, uh, pride, anger, jealousy, all these things have caused, uh, are, are all enemies of the cross. And so we must be aware that when we sin, sorry, we are crucifying the Son of God again. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 to 6, and we'll bring this whole section to a close. For it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift, the heavenly gift here of salvation, and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to open shame. Right. There are enemies of the cross in this world. A friend could be an enemy. Sometimes our own family could be an enemy to us in the sense that they may you know, make fun of our faith, ridicule us for our faith. Friends may ridicule us. Relatives may ridicule us. Our neighbors may ridicule us. But here's the thing. When we our, our eyes are fixed on Jesus, we will not end up being an enemy of the cross. If we live in sin, Hebrews says, we are crucifying the Son of God once again. Right? So let us all, I just want to encourage us that, you know, the cross is a powerful place. The resurrection power of the cross is available for each one of us. Right? So we'll bring this class to a close. Uh, 
from next week, we'll start with section three, which is the blood of Jesus Christ. We'll look at what the blood of Jesus Christ does uh, and how it is powerful and works in our lives. Right. So any questions, any thoughts? Uh, all right. Shall we bring this uh, session to a close? Uh, just request uh, maybe Sid, if you can lead close in prayer for us. Sure, Pastor. Thank you. Father, we come to the throne of grace. Lord, thank you for this day. As we have been learning from this word, Lord, this subject, Lord, we thank you for this subject, Lord. We thank you for the students, the teacher, Lord. Whoever all are studying about your blood, about the cross, about the covenant, Lord, what and all we are with the learning we are getting, Lord. Lord, it should not be wasted or just kept aside, but let it should be a weapon to, to Lord, it can be used as a weapon so that we can conquer the lands, Lord, as the promise you have given us to the Abraham, the blessings you have kept in the Bible, Lord, and all the promises which are for the end days, Lord, it should be fulfilled, Lord. Thank you for the pastor, for the teaching us, Lord. Thank you for all the students who are learning this, Lord, Lord. In Jesus' name, we bless everyone and say amen. 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 Thank you, Sid, uh, for praying. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, have a great week ahead. Uh, we'll catch up next week. We'll start with Section 3, The Blood of Jesus Christ. Right. God bless.